All right, are we ready to get started? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Just keep, oh good, okay. You had breakfast, you had some coffee, you're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer because this is going to be a action-packed, fast, fun-filled morning. You're gonna be glad you woke up early, or you probably woke up, woke up early anyway if you came from, the, if you came from, uh, I like to say you came from, <laughs> that is true, that is true. So I always forget to do this, but I'd like to introduce myself. I always just kind of jump into the presentation. So my name is Jessica Murillo, and I'm the Vice President of System Strategy at IBM. And so what I get to do in my day job is I get to work with clients to help build out um, product roadmaps so they can build out their IT infrastructure into you know, either clouds or uh, enterprise data centers or hyperscale data centers. And I, I know my friends at Rackspace know a lot about that. So um, that's what I get to do in my day job. And I became involved with the women of OpenStack in Hong Kong. And it was literally because I missed the boat. I, um, <laughs> for any of you who took the train here, you know that in trying to make it to the women's event, I mean, it's sometimes challenging to uh, get places on time. And so that was my first experience. I signed up, I had my Eventbrite ticket, but my plane was late. But I was still hooked. And so um, I became involved, uh, you know, joined the uh, the LinkedIn group at that time. Um, and then in Atlanta, I, uh, you know, happened upon the, you know, went ahead and RSVP'd for the women's networking event where I was, uh, where I got to meet a lot of great women who were interested in technology like me. And I said, this is a place that I want to be. So that is kind of my history with the women of OpenStack. Um, so did anyone get a chance? Did they maybe come in early? Were smart and came in early? Are they going to take a, maybe a take a day uh, afterwards? Does anyone recognize the picture you see up here on the monitor? CJ, I know you do. What, what is that? It is a bridge at the Imperial Palace. And so I do encourage everyone. Um, this is such a beautiful um, city for art and culture and architecture. Try to get out. I know that these are jam-packed sessions, but you really need to get out and see some of the beauty of Tokyo and Japan. Um, but I, I, there is some symbolism in this bridge um, because this is I, I, that is the Imperial Palace, but the bridge is very famous too. It's probably the most uh, famous bridge in Tokyo, um, as well as a. Uh, if you look at some of the guidebooks, it is a symbol for all of Japan. And I thought it was very symbolic of what we're trying to do with the women of OpenStack as well, because we are trying to build a bridge. We're trying to build a bridge to bring more women into the community and to bring more diversity in the community. So it's a, it's a great symbol for us here in Tokyo today as well. So you might be wondering why we're here. So by a quick show of hands, who was able to attend this working breakfast in either Paris or Vancouver? Oh, that's great. That's great. So you know the good stuff you're going to get to do here. And so, okay, we have to do the obligatory. Who, ha who was it? Who's the, this is their first time is their working stack breakfast. Okay, great. Okay, good. So we will, we will help you along. And you're, again, as I said earlier, you're going to be glad that you got up early to do this. Um, so what we're going to do, we started this in Paris, and we started talking about plans. It's been great. This, this group has gotten together since uh, probably the unconference in San Diego for networking opportunities, um, helping with education as well as, uh, you know, kind of general support for women in OpenStack. But in Paris, we did something a little bit different. We got together and we wanted to create a charter of things we wanted to accomplish for the next six months, basically between Paris and Vancouver. And uh, we want to continue, continue, continue that tradition today. Um, we want to continue to find ways um, and opportunities to work together. So we're going to talk a little bit about our accomplishments. We're going to have some great lightning speakers. You're going to break into some groups. We're going to take a picture. Um, and then we're going to talk about next steps. All that in the span of the next hour and 15 minutes. So hold, hold on. OK. All right, so what we've accomplished since Vancouver. Um, so really, the, some of the feedback that we got back um, from the groups was we needed to increase the opportunities for women to have more leadership 
and specifically we're focusing on speaking opportunities. So going into the Vancouver Summit, um, we had three of our women of OpenStack, um, Ann Gentle, Nikki Acosta, as well as Diane Mueller, create a webinar for how to submit a winning abstract, which was very well attended by both, by both uh, women and as well as men. Um, we also have encouraged women to present in the technical ba brown bags, both at Vancouver here um, as well as in Tokyo. Um, and then also we've sponsored panel discussions. And our panel discussion, will, which will be led by uh, Diane Cohen on Beth Cohen, I'm sorry, Beth Cohen, um, on Thursday, um, we will be talking about uh, subtle bias and how to understand uh, the biases that we all have. So that's what we did as around, around speaking opportunities. Now, the, the other, the other uh, focus area was communicating between summits. It was great when we came together and had networking events here at summits, but then it kind of you know, went radio silent for several months until, until the next summit. And so you know, some things that we've accomplished is we've had regular meetings that have been led by Carol Barrett, and you'll hear from her a little bit later today, uh, for the women of OpenStack, um, as well as regular communications on our women of OpenStack mailing list. That was another thing that we started. And new um, for this summit is the creation of our OpenStack Women IRC channel. So really a lot of more opportunities for us to communicate in between summits as well. Now the goals for today's session are pretty simple. Um, we have some great speakers, as I mentioned earlier, who are here to um, inspire you. Um, so we're gonna have two lightning talks um, where uh, these are women who are both very active in the OpenStack community. But you know, kind of building on the theme of we are OpenStack, there's lots of us that come from different walks of life, who have different jobs, who have different experiences. And so what we wanted to do is show kind of two different sides of the uh, OpenStack community. So we have someone who's an active technical contributor, and we have someone who's more of a product management evangelist who's working to build the ecosystem and community. Um, so they'll talk to you about one thing that they learned to be, uh, that's helped them be successful in their current role. So, then we're going to break up into small groups. Um, we have two rooms to the either side, and well as we can use this entire room. So we'll break you up into groups. Um, we do have an Etherpad link up here. You can, hopefully someone has a, uh, a device, a mobile device that they can, uh, for, for one for each group, we would like someone to take minutes. Because what we want you to do is spend 30 minutes after the lightning talks, um, getting to know one another, sharing what you learned from the lightning talk, and also sharing your own experiences. So that's what we're going to do for 30 minutes. Uh, then we're going to uh, come back together, and um, Carol Barrett from Intel is going to lead us in uh, a discussion about how we get ready for Austin. That's my home city, my hometown. Yay! Um, I'm so glad I get to go. I don't have to travel for 14 hours. I get to sleep in my own bed. Um, but yes, I... We can't wait to welcome you. I know Nikki is from Austin as well, so we can't wait to, and Anne as well. We get to welcome you to our, our home city, so. All right, so that's kind of what we're gonna do today. And with that, I would like to introduce our first Lightning Talk singer. Uh, singer. Well, you guys, you could sing it. I, it is, this is the city for karaoke, isn't it? I think it is. Um, you can choose to sing if you'd like. Our <laughs> Lightning Talk speaker, uh, Jing Yang, um, she is a senior consultant technologist at EMC. Her expertise is storage, data protection, and uh, disaster recovery, as well as cloud and virtualization technologies. She has been an OpenStack contributor since the Grizzly release, and she's currently a core in both Cinder and Manila. So with that, I'd like to welcome Xing. Hi, I cannot sing, okay? <laughs> um, I'm Xin Yang. I'm a technologist from the office of the CTO at EMC. Um, I have uh, attended uh, the Women of uh, OpenStack event at every summit since uh, Portland. So it's such a great opportunity to have all these wonderful women to get together and to know each other and to support each other. Today, I want to talk about my journey into OpenStack. 
Um, I attended my very first OpenStack Summit in uh, Boston in 2011. That was the ASX Summit. At that time, I knew nothing about OpenStack because I was not a contributor, so I couldn't even get into the design sessions. And um, in 2012, I got the task of writing a Cinda driver to support EMC storage and uh, uh, to contribute it to OpenStack. So I wrote the driver and I started to navigate through the contribution process. It was daunting. <laughs> it <laughs> took me a while to figure out how to do it and uh, finally at the end of uh, 2012, I submitted my very first patch. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, so I got a very warm welcome from the Cinder team right away. Uh, the first uh, review comment I got was, glad to see EMC finally joining the game. <laughs> please, please fix PEP8 errors. <laughs> so, <laughs> So for, for anyone who doesn't know what PEP8 is, it's a coding style. Uh, it could be that you missed a period at the end of a doc string or a space after operator or uh, some indentation issues. So um, it took me a while to sort through those uh, uh, PEP8 issues and I submitted another patch. And uh, I got another review comment saying, uh, your unit tests are not uh, testing anything. <laughs> so I went back to work and I uh, rewrote all the unit tests. That was the week between the Christmas and uh, New Year. Most people were on vacation. But there were a few Cinder course they were still working. And they responded to my uh, uploaded uh, patches very quickly. My driver was uh, merged right before the New Year, making me the first uh, OpenStack contributor from EMC. So, <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, uh, early in Grizzly. And uh, at that time, I was also involved in a multi-vendor initiative to bring fiber channel support into Cinder. The group had meetings regularly, um, and uh, we also had a joint presentation at the Havana Summit in Poland. I was sitting in the front row with a few other developers from other companies. So the session was very well received. At the, at the end, while we were still sitting there, they started to show this uh, uh, the visual development history of block storage. So it's, it's, a, uh, it's a visual graph with all the, develop, uh, all the contributors' names displayed based on the time of the commit. It was very, very cool. So we were sitting there searching for each other's names. We had a really wonderful time. Um, working on OpenStack is very different from any other project that I had worked on before. It's completely a new experience. Um, but I just really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the aspect of collaborating with uh, people um, from different companies, but we are working together towards a common goal. Being an OpenStack com a contributor is very special. Even though in the years after my very first commit, um, there were some bumps on the road, I always tried not to move away from OpenStack. At the Juno Summit in Atlanta, I attended a Cinder session where the team were talking about what constitutes a Cinder driver and uh, that everyone should uh, um, give back more to the community, should help with like code reviews and uh, bug fixes into the core code. It reminded me of what President uh, John F. Kennedy once said, um, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. So here we are saying, ask not what the OpenStack community can do for you, but ask what you can do for the OpenStack community. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so it was uh, in that session I realized that I really did not do enough. I should contribute more. So um, around that time, I trans trans um, transitioned my driver work to BUs and uh, helped uh, bring them up to speed with contributions. And in the same time, I shifted my focus to work on core contributions. And my first uh, major non-driver contribution was to add consistency group support into Cinder. And uh, uh, at that time, I was also involved in another project, Manila. It's the uh, shared file system service project. Back then, we still had the 
incubation and graduation process. Manila was still new, it was still trying to get incubated. Uh, but since then, Manila has uh, gone a long way. Uh, it has become an official project in OpenStack and uh, we have a lot of uh, new contributors now. So one month after the, the Juno, Juno Summit in Atlanta, I got nominated to become a, a core in Manila. And two months later, I was nominated to become a Cinder core. So I was uh, very happy about that. Uh, <laughs> Um, so I think working on OpenStack is such a rewarding experience. It gave me opportunities to travel to different places, meet different people, and come to the Women of OpenStack event and make new friends. It's, uh, I enjoy working with people from different backgrounds. We may not agree with each other all the time, but we always try to reach a consensus when there's a disagreement. It's uh, really um, exciting to work in the team that is building OpenStack because um, it makes me think that what I'm working on every day will help make the world a better place. The other day um, on TV, they were showing this, uh, this picture of um, world leaders um, with all the men removed from the picture. So the women in the picture look very lonely because there are just so few of them up there. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, and there's this uh, hashtag, more women. Yeah, so I think we need that uh, hashtag here too. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we need to encourage more women to come and join us and to work on OpenStack. And together we will build a better OpenStack for tomorrow. Thank you. you'll notice at the end of the table there are these pamphlets and hopefully if you're on our women of openstack mailing list oh i not pretty. can you hear me you can probably hear me yeah. if you if you're on our women of openstack mailing list you would have received this um so on the front page these are all the great things the ways for us to connect during the week you'll see the the breakfast session on here um as well as the tech talks and the uh the tech tools lunch and learn later today and then tomorrow it shows the uh the uh, Overcoming Subtle Bias session, as well as the afternoon sync up we have in the afternoon, uh, later, later in the afternoon on Thursday. And on the inside is the handy dandy map that we all need to, to navigate from session to session. So that's us very handy. So with that, let me introduce um, Nikki Acosta. She is a Cisco cloud evangelist and a co-host of OS Pod. She joined Cisco after the, metal the MetaCloud acquisition in late 2014. Um, but when I first met her, she worked for a different company. She worked for Rackspace. And that's where her OpenStack journey really began back in 2008. Um, so she is a frequent um, speaker, podcaster, and blogger. She is recognized in the cloud industry for not only her cloud uh, technology expertise, but also as being a passionate advocate for women in technology. She really wants me to use this. Okay, I'm going to use this. Thank you. With that, I will turn it over to Nikki Acosta. All right, we're good on time. That's great. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited about this kimono. I picked it up in Nakarusa, and I was like, I have to wear it, but then I need to choose and socks and an Obi belt. I was like, man. So I don't know. Now I understand why they walk slow, though, because if you walk fast, like your skirt opens. So you got to kind of like <laughs> walk really slow. Uh, so uh, my name is Nikki Acosta. She gave me a, a pretty awesome introduction. Thanks, Jess. And man, real quick for all the help that she's done. How about a round of applause for, for Jess? So awesome. So uh, when she asked me to talk, she's like, hey, you want to come talk about something you know, other than what technical contributors do? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that, no problem. Uh, so I, I do a little podcast called uh, The OpenStack Pod, which is actually a trademark violation. Holla! So we, uh, <laughs> we had to change it to OS Pod now, is the official name. Claire's giving me, a, they're giving me thumbs up there in the back, Allison. And then uh, we're quick to send me an email, or Jeff an email. So uh, 
when she asked me to talk, she's like, yeah, you could talk about anything, talk about you know, what's, what's made you successful. And uh, I was starting to think about why, why that is. Like, why, how did I get to where I am today? And, and I think part of, it was, uh, part of it was luck, but I think at some point, I just, I, I was less afraid to fail. And, you know, working in an industry where it's predominantly men and, you know, there's, we we're talking this morning about, you know, cliches, you know, even something that sounds as innocuous as, you know, oh, we're going to open the kimono. It's like, you know, you hear, you hear the stuff day in and day out. And, and you know, to, you know, I have to defend men a little bit because I think they just don't understand or don't realize that those things can be perceived as uh, offensive. And so I've made it my mission over the last few years, thanks to, you know, encouragement and women in open stack to start speaking up about those things. And, you know, once you kind of speak up and you realize that the, the intent is not to harm you or the intent is not to offend you, and that it was just, you know, something that's so culturally ingrained that you don't think twice about it, you kind of go, okay, like, that's, that's not, that's not so bad after all. You know, I can deal with that. Like, you know, someone apologizes and then maybe they, they stop doing it because they didn't realize that, you know, a phrase like that would be, uh, would, would be offensive to you in any way. So, um, I think the other part uh, of my success has just been attributed, in addition to not being afraid to fail, is um, is really just finding uh, finding roles where I could do what I love. You know, I um I have tried my darndest to uh, to even just deploy load balancers via an API, and it's freaking hard. Like it is, it is hard to do. It's like another language to me. Uh, and so I, I'm also, you know, when you go to an interview and they say, hey, what do you love to do? What do you not love to do? Uh, I don't love spreadsheets. I, my brain just cannot, booking flights, spreadsheets, like logistical things, not my thing. But I started to realize that if I could team up with people who, who complimented me because they were good at what I wasn't good at, uh, that I would be more successful than if I, you know, tried to go it alone. And so uh, I, one of my new BFFs at Cisco is a project manager, and this guy loves spreadsheets. He lives for spreadsheets. And so I'm helping out with some product prioritization stuff, and I'm like, man, you know, we really need help taking all this info from sales and prioritizing it, and you can see his eyes, like, light up. And he's like, man, I love doing that. I was like, sweet, let's work together. And so I'm helping him uh, build uh, his online profile and his personal brand on Twitter, which he was like, you know, I've never used Twitter. It's kind of Greek to me. Uh, and so, you know, I sat down and showed him how to use Twitter and hashtags and told him, hey, don't be the guy with the egg, upload a photo. Uh, and so twi Twitter has been a, a really great tool uh, for my career, not only because, you know, I get to share some of the things that I do, but also because I learn so much from other people. And it's, it's a two-way channel that doesn't require a phone number or an email address. So it's slightly, uh, I think, less... It's easier to get that information from somebody because it's out there in the public domain, and it seems almost less intrusive than asking for an email and a phone number. But uh, it's very rare that I send someone, you know, uh, a message or a tweet at them, and they don't tweet back, which is really great. And so I've I've used Twitter to ask all kinds of questions and share all kinds of opinions. Uh, the other thing I learned about Twitter is that people really don't like you if you're just a, a a megaphone for your company. So you gotta be yourself. You know, the, the most interesting people that I follow on Twitter, their tweets are maybe 10% about work and 90% about them. And I think that's really cool when you start to look at Twitter. Some people think like, oh, I need it for my career. I should just use it to retweet all of the press releases that come out from my company. And that's, that couldn't be farther from the truth. You know, if, you're, if you are a person with a personality on Twitter uh, and you're yourself, I think people are, are much more apt to follow you and like you and interact with you. So if I had to give anyone advice, it would be, you know, Build your personal brand through social media. You know, I, I, uh, I often think, I have a five-year-old, and I often think, like, long after I'm gone, like, what is he going to find about me on the Internet? <laughs> you know? And so that's usually my litmus test for what I should post and what I shouldn't post, because sometimes I'm like, oh, I should tweet that. No, nah, I shouldn't tweet that, you know? Uh, that's the other thing. Once you put it out there, it's kind of out there forever. So you, you want to make sure what you, what you post is something you want, you're going to live with later in life. But I guess part of that also comes back to not being, uh, you know, afraid to fail and not being afraid to speak up and not being afraid to use your voice and not being afraid to, to push the boundaries. I've, I've been incredibly lucky in my career because I've, I've taken the risk to, to call leaders on my company to voice, you know, my concerns and not just focus on problems, but focus on solutions. And they, they seem to like that a lot. And so, um, 
you know, just because you're you're a woman in a in a sea of men, or you know, you're a minority, or whatever else. Uh, my advice to you would just be not to be afraid to fail and follow your dreams. Go for what you what you want in life, and uh, and do it. That's all. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate our speakers. So for the next phase, we are going to come up here and we're gonna take a picture around our sign. We are OpenStack. Yes, so uh, we are kicking, this off, kicking off this campaign, um, starting it here in Japan, but we really want to highlight it going into Austin. Um, so keep this, uh, make sure that you remember this hashtag. We want to use it um, kind of as a cadence or a drumbeat between now and Austin. And so we're going to start it by coming up here and everyone taking a picture. So uh, if you wouldn't mind coming up here and we have our photographer. Yeah, we're going to move all this. <laughs> All right. I didn't realize there was one single aisle, so we're jammed, but okay, come on. Everybody, come on. And we did a quick count earlier, and we were kind of in the 70 range. Does that still look about right? Oh, look at you. Come on up, come on up. Sorry. <laughs> and it's going to be the photographer's job to make sure he gets everybody in the shot. <laughs> Grab, Grab a seat. Grab a seat. The gentleman don't mind set standing in the back. And get closer. Yes, get closer. You like each other. Pretend you're on the train. Okay, everybody pretend you're on the train. It sounds like she's done this before. Yes. Exactly. My 16 year old calls this the prom picture shot. Right? No? Okay. Keep on going. The, the male allies can come up as well. Come on. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Yep. Nikki, you have to get in the picture. Let's go. You're not too late. You're not too late. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in.
Good job. Okay. Okay, don't go too far because we're going to break them into groups right now. So if you want to stand, just go ahead and stand where just go ahead and stand where you're at. If everybody wants to stand where they're at, we're going to count off groups like uh, elementary school style. If you want to go back to if you want to go back to your seat, that might be easier, actually. Sorry, sorry. Hi, Richie. Nice to see you. Well, but that's people that, yeah, I want to divide it because then they're sitting by people they know. What, what do you think? All right, so if you go back to your seat, we're going to break you up into quick groups and we're going to start our discussion. Okay, so I don't know if everyone got a cup of coffee, but we're going to, so we have this room as well as the room to the left and the room to the right. So what we would like to do is to break up into groups about 10 people. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, through Beth. Hmm. So are you guys going to stay here? Yep. yep. Okay. So these three people are in the second group. So y'all group one, okay? Group one. Right, so you have to pick a scribe as well. So uh, the scribe needs to go up, come up here and look at the etherpad location. And um, we're going we're gonna to do this all online. So that looks like that's one, two, three, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight. I put a link to the etherpad off of our wiki page, too. Oh, good. Okay, it's also off our wiki page. So you'll get to see where our wiki page is, too. Okay, I think it was at nine, eight, nine, ten. You'll group two, okay? You can make up team names if you want. That's fine. All right, so let's keep going here. You, this is group three. One, two, are you staying? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's group, what group are you? Okay, you're listening. That's awesome. You're group three. This is group four, right? One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The rest of you are group four. Now you can stay here in your group or you can go to one of the other areas if you think it might be too loud. Okay. The next two rooms next to us. Okay, so are the guys in the back? Are you guys hanging? Yes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We'll go ahead and add you. What group are you? Group five. Yes, everyone's paying attention. It's early, I know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll go ahead. Eleven, right here. This is a group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is the group seven. Seven. Five, six, seven. Okay. All right. We will be coming around. Um, so again, your task is to is to have one scribe. The etherpad location is up here. It's also um, on the link from our wiki. We want you to capture the key takeaways and any other inspirational ideas that you have for the other women of OpenStack to be successful in their role. Does that make sense? All right, 30 minutes.
tiny. So tiny. <laughs> I don't know how you would give me that. It's not that bad, actually. Can we take your chair to bring your She can do it. She's the she's the master. Okay. I will I will go over it one more time. So in your small groups, discuss the key messages that our lightning speakers shared. And then if you have any other ideas on how to be successful in your role, um, you can share that. We'd like for you to, to uh, annotate that on the Etherpad. So this is something that we can capture uh, for, the, for the next session, is the idea. But I'll wander around if you guys have questions. Sometimes it's easier just to begin with what you've heard.
so much for your help. I've never been able to get it off of that mode. I, I attached it to, okay, so I don't want this to come up because it, I'm watching a dirty movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that one? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Probably not appropriate for this audience. <laughs> it was my daughter's. So <laughs> she was like, here, Bob, watch this. What?
All right. Okay. If everyone wants to take a quick seat. Did you want to talk a little bit about outreachy now? Okay, great. All right, if everyone wants to take a seat, you don't have to move back if you don't want to. This will be pretty quick. Did everyone learn something? Did everyone make a friend? Are we all going to continue to connect throughout the week? Yay! Awesome. Okay. So the keynote doors are opening now. I want you guys to get a seat. So if Carol wants to come on up. And we also have a speaker from the foundation who's going to talk about outreachy. So do you want to do that first or do you want to do yours first? Okay. Real sure. So let's do the outreachy real quick. You want to sit, sit, or you want to sit up here or something? You want to come on up? Okay, Victoria is here from the OpenStack Foundation, and she wanted to share with the group some information about outreachy. <laughs> So hello everybody. Um, I also want to welcome Mahati. Um, she's from Intel. Um, we are both our, our coordinator for the outreach internship in uh, OpenStack. Uh, that internship is intended to get more women involved in open source. Uh, we have been running this internship for about two years now, and uh, the next round is going to close for. Uh, in November 2nd. Um, it will be really nice if you are interested and you want to help mentoring some uh, applicant for the next round, please get in touch with me and with Mahati here. Or you can pass on this information to uh, anyone who's interested. Let them know about the program. Is the mentoring, is it only for like software development or will this work? We have docs and testing as well. Okay. API. Yeah, the, um, Actually, it can be for anything you want. It ha there have been internships for marketing as well, and design and everything. Uh, we only need that people that is working on the, those areas say, okay, I want to mentor someone in this area in particular, then um, of course we are willing to take that internship and to help more women to get involved in the different areas in OpenStack. Um, we have been very successful in the last couple of years with this internship. We have many people that are right now. Right now here. Yes. Uh, the admins and who have gotten jobs after that. Yes. I'm a former uh, intern. She is as well. And we have uh, interns that made it really well from um, the last couple of rounds. Uh, we have Sayali over there. She is working on the manuals. Uh, we have uh, a Spurti there that she all did an amazing coding uh, internship in Sakar. Also Dora Lee over there. Uh, I don't know who, who am I missing. Cindy, <laughs> of course. Yes, well, we're a lot, and uh, it's a great way to get more women involved in OpenStack. I know that there are a lot of mentors that are uh, applying for the next round here, but sometimes it's like uh, people don't know about this internship in OpenStack, and uh, it would be great if you could help us to spread the word about it and, uh, well, get more people involved with us. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. So hi, I'm Carol Barrett with Intel, and I've been helping to continue to keep the group meeting and talking and figuring out what it is that we can do together and we want to achieve in between summits. And so starting to think about um, Austin, which will be here before any of us know it, um, you know, there's things that we've been talking about around a launching a mentoring program beyond outreachy for folks who are inside of the community today. Um, and are looking to either get into new projects or learn new type of skills or get connected with other types of folks. And um, we'd like to go ahead and um, 
put more definition around that and actually try and launch it or at least pilot it in Austin as a way to go ahead and see how can we really help each other. We were having a conversation earlier about <clears throat> you know, one of the, uh, the best ways to get more women involved is to go ahead and reach out to the women that we know and help them to get in because it's easier always to start something new when somebody is there to lend a hand and, and show you the way. And so the mentoring program would be a way to go ahead and allow us to, to do that and over time hopefully scale it so that it's a larger program and not just around women but actually allowing us to be able to work with everybody in the community so that we can go ahead and be able to be a more integrated and, and broader co community that continues to grow and thrive. Um, so we'll have those conversations in the, uh, in the team meetings. So please, my call to action is continue to stay involved. Right? You know, get on the, the mailing list, uh, be active on the meetings in the wiki site, add your thoughts, um, and to go ahead and um, I think all of the, the links are either, um, okay. Yeah, the, so you can go and just Google the wiki and you'll find it there and then you can find the mail list and everything else from there. But please, you know, stay involved, be active, help us to figure out how to, you know, uh, make our community really be the community that we want it to be and uh, look forward to seeing what we do in Austin together. Yes. So that's it. Thank you, Carol. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take all your comments. Um, we're going to there will be available from our wiki. Um, and from that, we're going to derive what we want to do next time. I think definitely the mentoring program is something we want to get behind. But there's other ideas that came out of your discussions. We want to include those as well. So a big thanks to the foundation. Um, I know Claire and Allison are probably upstairs in the main session. Um, a huge thanks to our speakers, um, Nikki Acosta and uh, Jing, Jing Yang. Why don't we give them another round of applause? And thank all of you for coming. So with that, we are adjourned. Um, and make sure that you take one of the pamphlets. And I hope to see you at a Women of OpenStack event later in the week. Yay! Yay!